Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, we're on our way to Pine Ridge to see what the old fellows are up to this evening. Let me tell you a little more about this flashlight that Lum and Abner are sending out to all users of Horlicks malted milk. So I'd be able to know what I was talking about, Lum and Abner let me borrow one of these flashlights. Got it here with me right now. Suppose I describe it to you. All right. Well, it looks like a fountain pen. It's just about the same size. And on it, there's a good, strong clip, just like a fountain pen has. That's to keep the flashlight from falling out of your coat or vest pocket if you want to carry it around just as you do a pen or automatic pencil. Now, down at the bottom end of this good-looking aluminum tube is a flashlight bulb, a non-breakable, solid crystal bulb that can't become unscrewed and get lost. Now, at the top, just above the clip I mentioned a minute ago, is the little button that you press to turn on the flashlight. And when you press that little button, well, that's when you're going to get the surprise of your life. Well, you wouldn't believe that anything as compact as this could throw out such a powerful beam of light. I tell you, folks, this little flashlight is certainly a peach. Every single one of you ought to send in and get one. That's easy enough to do, you know. Just send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Can be from any size package, either natural or chocolate flavor, but it must be a Horlicks malted milk powder wrapper. What I mean by that is that wrappers from Horlicks tablets are not eligible. Now write your name and address on the back of this wrapper and enclose 10 cents to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight. Then, mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. And in return, Lum and Abner will send you one of these handsome pocket-sized flashlights, complete with bulb and battery. Now, don't put off sending in for your flashlight. Do it right away. Do it tonight, before you forget it. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are very much concerned right now over the fact that Abner's wife, Elizabeth, has discovered an accident policy of Abner's and has put in a claim for damages on account of his recent accident. (laughs) The old fellows are afraid to tell Elizabeth that the accident was a fake, that Abner has not been hurt, and yet they don't want to accept any money from the insurance company on a false claim. The adjuster is expected in Pine Ridge today. As we look in on the office of the Matrimonial Bureau, we find Cedric Weehunt there in response to an urgent call from Abner. Listen. Uh, No, I just called you over here, Cedric, to uh, remind you to be sure not ever mention to nobody that my arms ain't showing us broke. (laughs) Well, I ain't told nobody, but... But Ma said she heard Mr. Love make announcement over the party line yesterday, and he was telling everybody that there weren't nothing to that story about your arms being broken. Yeah, I know, I know. Love got mad in here yesterday. My wife heard it, too. Really? We had a terrible time getting her straightened out on it. I had to get Lum to go over there and tell her that uh, he just done that for a joke. He told her he knowed she'd be listening in. <laughs> he just want to have some fun out of her. <laughs> Did she appear to believe him? Yeah, she's all right now, but, Lord, me, she was mad at a wet setting hen yesterday. If she finds out the truth now, why, it'll be worse than ever. That's the reason I wanted to caution you not to breathe it to a soul. Oh, no, ma, I won't. To tell you the truth, seeing you going around with your arms wrapped up that way, I'd about forgot myself that you weren't showing up in no accident. Well, just go <laughs> ahead and let yourself forget it, then. That's the way they, they, won't, they won't be no chance for you to give me away then. Well, I'll try to forget all about it. Only trouble with me, when I try to forget something that way, look, looks like I get to thinking about it so hard that I recollect it better than ever then. <laughs> I, I believe the best way is for me not to try to recollect to forget it. Yeah, well, you ought to know better than anybody else, Cedric, whether you forget best when you're remembering or remember best when you're forgetting. Well, let's see, I'm getting sort of mixed up on it now. I forget whether I'm supposed to remember it or forget it. Forget it. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, but I forget what it was I'm supposed to remember to forget. Well, fine. You're doing all right then, Cedric. You've done forgot it. Yes, but but I don't know what it was I forgot. Well, just quit thinking about it. You're liable to recollect it, and then you'll have to forget it all over again. Um, Was that all you wanted with me, Mr. Abner? Yeah, I reckon so, Cedric. Well, I expect I better get on back to work then. Mr. Dick said he had some orders for me to deliver. Uh, the mail carrier hadn't got out yet when you left down there, had he? No, he hadn't come before I left. Oh, <laughs> doggies, I'm anxious to see how many votes I got today. <laughs> you know, me and Lama's letting the folks out on the party line besides 
which one of us is going to be president of a new store when we get it opened up. Well, I reckon that was what Luella was talking about then. Luella? Yes, my, my little sister. Oh, oh. She come home from school today at noon and said Mr. Lum was down at the schoolhouse there this morning and give a speech. He did. <laughs> Yes, I told, told them all to send in for one of them flashlights that you're giving away and told them to be sure and vote for him for president when they rode in. Oh, he did, did he? Yes, and that's what she said. So that's the kind of stunts he's pulling, Dad, and his hide. He's doing everything he can, Cedric, even putting up signs around town saying, vote for law matters for president. Oh, yes, and he's got the whole town covered with them signs. I know it. I reckon he'll be elected all right. But I, I hope you win, Mr. Abner, but... You know, whenever Mr. Lum makes up his mind to be elected to something, ain't nothing going to stop him. You know that yourself. Yeah. Well, of course, I never had no idea he's going to make a regular election out of this. You'd think he's running for a county judge the way he's carrying on. Well, if I was you, I'd get out here and do some handshaking. If you don't, he's going to beat you so bad you, you won't know you've been in the race even. Hey, don't get away from me. I'll just call up on the party line again. Remind him that I'm still in the race. Uh, you, you watch the front door, Cedric. If you see Lum coming, we'll holler at him. Yes, uh, uh, wait a minute, though. Here, you will have to ring the phone for me, Cedric. And hold a receiver up to my ear. I can't do nothing here with these arms. Just give the fire alarm ring. Oh, yes, a fire. Yeah, fire alarm. We all are rang that to get everybody listening in, you know. And all take down the receivers to find out where the fire is at. Well, where about this is fire? Why, there ain't none, Cedric. I'm just... Uh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, hold the receiver still now. Hello? Why, this here is Abner Peabody. I, I just want to thank you folks that's already rode in for voting for me. And, and just as quick as you get your flashlight, why, I wish you'd show it around to your friends. For, for I know that anybody that sees is going to want one of them. And be sure and tell them to vote for me, too, when they ride in. I don't know nothing about running for office this way, but if, if you folks elect me president, I'll guarantee that if any of you comes down to our new store... Want the stuff on a credit, I'll let you have it. I've been trying to get to be president ever since me and Long's been in business. And it's the first chance I've ever had to hold office. I, I, I'd love to just show Mr. you in Lund, one please. time what I can do. Mr. I don't... Huh? Here comes Mr. Lum out there in front. Oh, well, I hope you send in a vote for me. Goodbye. Hang up a receiver quick there, Cedric. Hang it up. That's your way. <laughs> I don't believe he's seen you. Oh, no. Well, i better get on back to work. Yeah, I'm much obliged, Cedric. Come back again. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. Oh. Well, hello, Cedric. You ain't leaving. Here's my respect. I better go. Well, I'd love to have you set a spell and visit with us. Here, have one of my cards. Tell your friends about me. What kind of card is that, Lom? Oh, I just got some little personal cards I'm handing around. Well, vote for Lum Edwards for president of the Jotham Down store. The people's choice. Get on the bandwagon. <laughs> well, well, much advice. So that's what you're doing. Getting out cards asking folks to vote for you now, huh? Well, recollect that old letter saying, everything's fair and love and war and politics. Where you been all morning, Mom? I tried to locate you all over town. Well, I've been... Well, I, I just had a little business to tend to. Yeah. yeah, I know what you've been doing. You're down at the schoolhouse making a speech asking the youngest to vote for you. That's what you're doing. Who told you that? Never mind. I heard it all right. <laughs> Well, Abner, you're going to get the surprise of your life in the next few days when these votes starts coming in. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what I'll do. Just to save you a lot of embarrassment, I'll let you withdraw from the race right now. Withdraw? Just, just forget about the whole thing. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. We'll just go ahead and fight this thing till finish. All right, all right. Recollect, I warned you. <laughs> if you get snowed under, it ain't my fault. No. Uh, what was it you wanted to see me so bad about? Why, that just meant feller from the insurance company was out this morning wanting to make a settlement on my accident. He was. Where about is he at now? Why, done went back, I reckon. Well, you explained to him that your arms weren't showing up broke. Did we just make an out like you heard on account of your wife? Didn't you? No, that's what I wanted to tell you, Lom. I never had a chance. He went over there to the house first, and Elizabeth called me to come over there, and by the time I got there, why, well, he'd already told her they was willing to settle for $200, and... He brought out a check for that amount with you. Well, you never taken it, did you? No, I never. But Elizabeth did. Her and Pearl's over there now figuring out what all they're going to buy with it in at the county seat tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Abner, if she cashes that check, they can send you to the penitentiary for obtaining false money under pretenses and get me for being an accessory to the crime. Well, I, I couldn't help it, Lum. I, I wanted to tell him that my arms weren't broke and that I never had nothing coming to me, but... Uh, just couldn't bring myself to do it with Elizabeth standing right there. Now we're into it. Oh, well, whereabouts is the check at now? 
Why, over there in the sugar bowl, I reckon. The sugar bowl? Yeah, that's where Elizabeth keeps all the money. Money for the heathen and stuff like that, you know. She's treasury for the missionary society. Well, there ain't but one thing to do, and that's for you to get that sugar bowl and get that check out of there and take it back in there to them insurance people before Elizabeth gets a chance to cash it. Well, I can't get it out with my arms and hands wrapped up in splints and bandages this way. Oh, that's right. I couldn't get my hand in a sugar bowl in the first place. Well, we got to get that check some way, Abner. I don't want to get mixed up in no false pretense business. It wouldn't be hard to get if somebody could just sort of slip in the kitchen there when Elizabeth ain't in there. That sugar bowl sets right there on the top shelf in the cupboard. Yeah, I was just thinking here. Uh, Re- reckon I could slip in there and get that check out without her catching me? Well, i tell you what I could do. I could see that that kitchen door is left unlocked tonight, and you could wait till we go to bed, and then you could slip in there and get it out no trouble at all. Yeah, Granny, that might work. What time do you generally go to bed? Well, now, that's the trouble. We don't get to bed very early. It's generally 8.30 or 9 o'clock before we ever turn in. Well, I, Granny, you leave that kitchen door unlocked tonight, Abner, and I'll slip over and get that check and take it back to the insurance company tomorrow. Tell them the truth about it. And this is the last time I'm going to try to help you, though. From here out, you can get yourself out of your own scrape, right? <laughs> well, if Lum doesn't get that check back tonight, it looks like Abner will be in some serious trouble. And no, don't don't forget, folks. Send in tonight for one of these handsome pocket-sized flashlights. You'd pay 75 cents for this useful little flashlight if you bought it at the store. But if you'll just send in for one, you can get it complete with bulb and batteries with the compliments of Lum and Abner. That's easy enough. For all you have to do is to send in the wrapper from a package, any size package, of Horlick's malted milk powder. Must be Horlick's malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlick's tablets, I mean, are not eligible. Well, write your name and address on the back of the wrapper and then mail it, enclosing 10 cents to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. In return, Lum and Abner will send you one of these little fountain pen-sized flashlights, complete with bulb and battery. Now, don't put off sending in until it's too late. Do it right away. Those of you who don't already have Horlicks malted milk powder in your home can get a package, you know, either natural or chocolate flavor, at your druggist. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.